Okay, so once we've got our raised bed situation under control, now we need to think about a cover element to keep us out of the weather. Obviously, we can put a fire in front of this, and we'll be talking about that as we go. But let's talk about what we're going to do for cover element. Now, in a temporary situation, obviously, we can put any tarp that we have with us. We've strategically placed this bed between two trees a little bit back from center line so that if we string a tarp up across here, it's going to cover this bed as long as we put ourselves an overhang out here. And that's the key element to that is to have that overhang. Now, that's all dependent on the size of your tarp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a canvas tarp on this because I'd like to make this a little bit more of a temporary semi-permanent type shelter or a station camp where I can go from, you know, one camp out to the trap line to this camp and then back if I decide I want to spend the night in between times on a trap line or something like that. So this will be like a stationary camp area that I can use in between the base camp that's back at the Pathfinder School classroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a larger tarp here. It's a 10 by 10. But it will set up the same as any tarp would set up. So you can use this tarp or this example as how I would set up any other tarp. Now, your tarp is going to be a temporary situation, but it can always be used to cover over anything else that you have in the interim until you get it set up solid. And that's the key is you don't have to do all of this stuff in one day or in one shot. The best thing for us to do would be to put up some type of pole solid uh, beam across these two trees so that we have that solid ridge pole and then we can build a shelter off of that which we will do over time but for the temporary we can throw the tarp up there and that will keep the weather off of us while we're building a heavier duty shelter stay with me and we'll get that set up okay so now that we have our raised bed set up we need to put some type of a tarp over it even if this is going to be a temporary type camp. I'm using the 8x8 trail tarp uh, from Derek Feria at the Woodsman School. Really, really good friend of mine, instructor at the Pathfinder School. I've got his 8x8 tarp out here. And what I've done is I've just taken the tarp in the center, right above the center of this raised bed, and I've stretched it out between two trees. And I haven't used a continuous ridge line on this. I've used two separate pieces of cordage with the same trucker's hitch type knot into the loop jam that we used in our earlier videos in this series to pull it taut and then I'm going to stake it down in the back and then we'll see where we're at and we'll talk about the configuration of this tarp and why we're doing it this way in just a minute. Okay, so this is our finished temporary camp. If this was a colder weather environment, and I mean, when I say cold, I mean even down in the 40s at night, there's no picnic when it's, you know, in the 80s during the day or 75 during the day. But if it's going to get down lower than that, same, same situation. What you want to do now is you want to make sure that the back of your tarp is shored up very well. You don't want to see any daylight underneath the back of that tarp. So get your rake back out and start raking some debris up over the top of the back of that tarp to hold that down. I've got a stick in the middle of this tarp. I've got both sides on the outside pulled down at a, at a pretty steep angle, just a little higher than the bed. I've got plenty of room inside there to get in, but this right here, there's a reason for this stick. Number one, I can't guide this out with a tarp or with a tarp line because I'm going to have a fire out here. So it's going to burn my tarp line. But the stick lifting this up, and this is just a real simple forked stick that I just stuck in this tie-out loop. I cut it to the size I wanted it and put it in the ground. And what that does is that gives me a little bit of an upsweep in my peak so that my fire, the radiant heat from my fire, can get inside that shelter and give me convective warming. Okay, just like we talked about yesterday. Conduction, convection, radiation. Those are all the things that you need to understand to manipulate or how to manipulate and if you can manipulate those three things, you can keep yourself 
safe, warm, and get a good night's sleep. And that's what's important is getting a good night's sleep. When you're in the bush, I don't care if it's for two days, three days, a week, you got to sleep. Like I said in one of my past 21st century long hunter videos, you know, George Washington Sears, Horace Kephart, Daniel Boone, Simon Kenton, Christopher Gist, all of those guys that traveled along the frontier areas of the eastern United States could do one thing very, very well. They knew how to get a good night's sleep. And a lot of those guys in modern times carried what they called a browse bag. And a browse bag basically was just a canvas sack. Think of a pillowcase that's the size of your body. And they would stuff that with debris, pine boughs, whatever the case may be. And that's what they would use for their mattress. And it would fold up very small inside their pack. And that's not a bad lick either for sure. But if you're going to use a wool blanket, and you could use a wool blanket in conjunction with that, but if you've got the modern conveniences of having sleeping pads and things like that, then you can use those. And two things that I would recommend that you carry while we're talking about sleeping, especially in a wintertime environment, make sure that you have a decent sleeping pad that's pretty much indestructible as far as the weather goes. This is just an exercise mat from Walmart. It's a real thick one. I think it's a Gold's gold's gym brand or something like that they're like 20 bucks but i've slept on this thing on the ground in temperatures down to minus nine degrees in an mms sleep system in the upper peninsula of michigan and it's really good for battling conduction problems but it's also pretty soft so if i put that on top of this raised bed of logs it's going to give me a little bit of a cushion the other thing i like to carry in the winter time is just one of these hunting seats and you can buy these on the off season from places like menards and walmart for less than five bucks but anytime you've got to sit down whether it's in camp on your knees whether it's setting traps on the trap line whether it's sitting down in camp doing tasks in front of the fire whatever the case may be if you sit on this it's going to take away a lot of that conductive heat loss from your body from sitting directly on the ground or kneeling directly on the ground so something like this can be worth its weight in gold and for a winter pack out setup you know i would say if you're traveling without these two things there's something wrong with your head but in the winter time, you're going to carry more gear. You need to understand that. And that may have to make you incorporate some type of a sled or a bigger backpack or some kind of a travoy situation. But some type of conveyance that you can put a few more pieces of gear in, especially if you're running a trap line or doing a long-term hunting scenario or something like that. You're going to need to carry more gear. And a sled's a really good way to do that. We'll talk about that more this winter. But things like these heavier tarps and bigger pieces of gear like these conduction mats and conduction pads, I call them, those type of things and bow saws and larger axes are very conducive to carry by a sled or some type of conveyance, even if it's horseback. But I wanted to show you what this setup looks like because this would be what I would do in the interim before I could build a more permanent type shelter. This is what I would do. And the way this is set up is the one side of this tarp is a little bit lower on this end than it is on this end. And the reason for that is I want this thing to shed water if it decides to rain. So if it rains, all that water is going to run down to one side and go off, which is where I can put a collection pail or something like that if I'm going to collect rainwater. But at the same time, it allows all that water to go to one area and not sit in my tarp somewhere and cause a big puddle. These tarps are pretty dang waterproof, but you don't want water sitting on them long period or long term either. So if you're going to set something like this, leave something like this set up for any period of time, you want to make sure there's no way water can be standing on the shelter. Okay guys, a couple final thoughts real quick before we end this part of the video or this part of the series. Um, if you notice on this bed, one side of this bed or one end of this bed, the tripods are just a little bit shorter than the other end. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is you never want to sleep with your head downhill. You'll wake up with a headache you will not believe in the morning because of blood flow. So you really want to get your head above that level line. The easy way to do that is to make sure that your bed's a little bit off level and that your head's on the high end. That will take care of those problems. One of the things that I think is the most underrated part of bushcraft and survival, self-reliance, whatever you want to call it, whether it's short term or long term, is a good night's sleep. And Morska Hansky says that every person needs two hours of REM type sleep per night. Well, that's a lot of scientific stuff that, you know, I don't know a whole lot about. But what I will tell you is... If I wake up two, three, four times in the middle of the night, I don't get a good night's sleep, and I'm a crabby camper in the morning. And it only takes so many days like that before your judgment's going to get clouded, before you're going to start making mistakes, before you're going to get irritated and irritable with your campmates and things like that if you have them. 
So a good night's sleep is something that you need to learn how to do or how to get. And it's a really good sign of how decent a woodsman is. If you go out into the woods with someone or you travel with someone or you go camping with someone and the next morning they're complaining that they didn't get any sleep, they don't have much experience in the woods. The ability to get a good night's sleep in a wilderness situation is one of the true marks of how good a person's skills are in the woods. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. We'll continue with this series. And again, you know, if this were summertime, I could just raise this tarp up on all four sides, fly it over the top of this thing, and I'd still be off the ground. One thing that's worth noting as far as getting off the ground is a lot of people worry about, I need to get off the ground, I need to get off the ground, I need to get off the ground. In some cases, that's true. In the case of a damp ground or a wet ground, it's better if you can get yourself elevated. But if you're just trying to get away from the critters, bugs can crawl, snakes can climb. It's not going to keep them out of your bed necessarily. It might make you feel a little more psychologically comfortable, but it may not necessarily keep them out of your bed. Just food for thought. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, associates, and sponsors. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.